administration is now confirming what was feared, that the Syrian regime used chemical weapons multiple times. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. Pressure is growing on President Obama to act. So I applaud the president's decision, and I appreciate it. But the president of the United States had better understand that just supplying weapons is not going to change the equation on the ground of the balance of power. The White House says it will boost military support to the rebels, but won't say exactly how. A leading option, arming the rebels. That could include desperately needed ammunition for rifles and machine guns, as well as new shipments of machine guns, shoulder-fired weapons to attack tanks, artillery, helicopters and jets, and mortars and rockets. The White House does not plan to put U.S. troops on the ground in Syria and is far from ready to commit to a no-fly zone. The question is, what is going to make a decisive difference now? And is the administration willing to do that? Or is this kind of a throw some guns that way and pretend you're doing something when it's not going to make a difference? The stakes couldn't be higher. It's important to us because of the tremendous number of chemical weapons that are there. And if these weapons get in the hands of the al-Qaeda-related terrorist groups, they will certainly be used against Europe and against us. The White House announcement comes after word that former President Bill Clinton is now siding with McCain, calling for tougher action. According to Politico, Clinton said at a private event with McCain, quote, some people say, stay out. I think that's a big mistake. Still the fundamental unanswered question, exactly what type of military assistance is the U.S. going to provide to the rebels? Barbara Starr, CNN, the Pentagon.